In this video I'll be reviewing the Samsung Galaxy Mini Smartphone. So this is a budget, first of all I'd like to say a big thank you to, oh do I? In this video I'll be reviewing the Samsung Galaxy Mini Smartphone. First of all I'd like to say a big thank you to the 3 Network in the UK for sending us this phone to review. And this is a really cheap budget Android smartphone. So this is available in contracts with 3 from £15 a month all the way up to £25 a month. I can also be bought pay as you go for £89 which makes it one of the cheapest Android smartphones available. So first of all, we'll take your tour of the device. So on the front of the device here at the top, we have a nice speaker grill, Samsung logo, and here we have a 3.14 inch capacitive touchscreen. It's good to have it seeing a capacitive touchscreen on such a cheap phone. However, unfortunately, this is one of the main letdowns of this device, as its resolution is only 240 by 320, which is about half the resolution, half the width, of most Android smartphones, yet the screen's the same size, which can make for some blocky text, as we'll see later. On the bottom of the phone, we have some hardware buttons, menu, home button, and back button. These are quite nice, and they're very, very easy to press. They're also quite clicky and tactile. This is the green version of the phone, which has a green board around the outside, which carries right round the side of the phone. On the back, we have a 3 megapixel camera, a 3.15 megapixel camera, Samsung logo, there's no flash for the camera though. The back is just regular plastic, however it's sort of bumpy finish and it does seem to fit quite nicely in your hand. And down here we have a speaker. Here we have a little microphone, and on this side we have the power switch which we'll use in a minute, volume rocker, and a little hole here which seems to be for a sort of lanyard thing to go into it. Okay, on the top of the phone we have a 3.5mm headphone jack, as well as a micro USB connection for charging and data transfer to the computer. You also get a 2GB micro SD card supplied out the box and this can actually be switched through a nice side slot. Okay, so now we're going to turn it on and I'll let you see the boot time of it while I talk through the specs on this device. So to turn it on, simply holding the volume, the power switch on the side of the unit and it'll start up. Okay, so the specs of this device really do reflect the price of it. You only get a 600 MHz ARM processor, however the phone does still perform fairly well as you'll see later. You're also limited to a 3.15 megapixel camera that only takes 15 frames per second video at 320 by 240 pixels and you'll really see the video later, it's quite a disappointment. The phone runs Google Android 2.2 Froyo and the screen has a resolution of 320 by 240 which is, about, which is really low. The width is about half of what you'd expect on a normal smartphone, yet it's the same size, and you can see later that it does make text appear quite blocky. You do, however, get a 2GB microSD card included out the box, and it can support up to 32GB. So it also only weighs 105 grams, which is, so it's nice and light, but doesn't feel too light, fits nicely in your hand, and is quite a compact phone to carry around with you. Okay, so we've now switched over to a darkened room so you can see the screen better. So let's turn the phone on, we'll just turn it on. Then we're dumped at this lock screen, which is the same Android lock screen as you'd have on any other phone, and you'd have like passcodes or patterns on here to unlock it. So we swipe that along to unlock, and we come into the main home screen. So this runs Samsung's TouchWiz interface, so they've made a few, quite a few changes to it, and it looks quite different to other Android smartphones. So you have five home screens, however differently you start on number one, and you have to swipe to the right to get all the other ones, whereas other Android smartphones tend to start you in the middle, and you can swipe left or right. So here's a few of the programs here. You can possibly tell the screen from this video, and I have found that it is a very low resolution and has some quality issues. I mean, that means text that can appear quite blocky. So we'll see if we can see that now. So we go up to the sales logo here for three. If the camera can focus on it properly, which it can't seem to for some reason. So you can possibly see there that text can appear quite blocky. I'm not sure it's coming out in the video. But I do find in use that graphics on the screen can appear really blocky and can sometimes even make my eyes feel a bit tired. So you can see that swiping between home screens on this phone feels nice and fast, despite the 600 megahertz processor. I think this is because the screen has a lower resolution, so it's having to drive less pixels, meaning it can run quite a bit faster. So down here we have your call button, which takes you into the phone dialer, phone book, messaging, and the app drawer. So here's the apps that come as standard on the device, quite a lot of them. Some of these I installed, however these can be seen here. 
The ones I installed was Quadrant Standard, Speed Test and Angry Birds, which we'll use later. And it's also quite nice, you can swipe when you get to the end of the three pages here, it swipes back to the first one, which makes it quite quick to swipe, swipe through them. You also get an FM radio and a music player. Another thing is, if you go into the memo interface, you get this swipe keyboard, which allows you to write by just swiping over the letters you want. And you can pick it up there. And this can be quite fast if you once you get used to it. However, if you don't like this, you can just use it like a regular keyboard. You've also got the music player. I was quite pleased with the quality of the internal speaker. It's a lot better than what I found on some other phones. However, unfortunately I found that if you hold the phone, you can easily block the speaker and it makes the sound come extremely quiet and muffled. However, one nice thing I found, that no matter where you are on the phone, you can pull down this top bar, which provides simple music controls, which is really nice. You've also got access to your power control up here to switch your Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, silent mode and auto rotation on and off, which is really nice. What I also found is if you hold down the power button to bring up the menu here, you can also use it to turn your data on and off, which is good if you're on pay as you go or a contract that doesn't have an internet allowance, which can help you save money. So, as you can see here, we'll now take, you've also got a 3 megapixel camera, so what I'll do is I'll show you some quality f from this. So here's three photos which I'll show you what the quality of them is. Okay, so here's the first one. The quality of the photo is actually quite good and it came out quite well. You can see that the colours came out quite nicely, quite bright colours, and I was generally very pleased with this photo. This is another one, also shows that the quality is quite good, and this was on, taken on quite a dull overclass day. The next one has some blurring issues, which I did find with this phone. You have to hold it really steady to get, to get to take a photo that hasn't blurred. However, the colour still came out quite well and it focused okay. So next we'll show you a sample of video on this phone, which, as you'll see, is very disappointing in my mind, as it only runs at 320 by 240 pixels. Okay, so this is a test of the video quality on the Samsung Galaxy Mini. You should also be able to tell the audio quality through the internal microphone in this. Video at 320 by 240 pixels, which is really low resolution, even for a phone. So if you're wanting a phone to do lots of video, I don't recommend this one. However, it, the, play, the recorder does have some nice features, such as a pause button, which allows you to pause recording and start it again without having to start a new clip, which is quite a nice little feature. Okay, so as you can see, the video quality on this device is very limiting. It's probably okay if you're just filming something quick that you want to show your friends on the phone. However, even for uploading something like YouTube, it's almost unwatchable. Okay, so next we'll take a look at some of the other applications. So here's internet on it. So if we open up the web browser, we're loading up. This is currently loading over a Wi-Fi connection. But if we, so if we enter our website, if we just go to Google quickly, like that, load up Google. Browser runs at a reasonable speed, and you can see that zooming in and out on a page is fairly smooth. So if we go to our website, review-this.org, load that up. This page is quite intensive, it's got a lot of resources on here, yet the phone still managed to load it okay, and even our little jQuery slider thing up here seems to function absolutely fine. Zooming in and out on this page is also quite fast, no major responsive issues there, and you do have a capacitive touchscreen with multi-touch support. However, this is where you can see the flaw with the low resolution screen, as as you can see here, text is unreadable when you're zoomed far out. It just turns into a big blocky mess, and you actually have to zoom in quite far to get sort of readable text out of it, which makes it quite unfortunate because you can't read a page when you're zoomed out far, no matter how good your eyesight is. However, pages load quite quickly, and it does run reasonably well. So we'll just load up another one of the pages on our site and try and watch an embedded video. So it's going to load up. And we can see we have a big black square where the video should be. See if that's going to load. Doesn't seem to be loading. And there it is, it just took a little while to load. So it's now loading the YouTube video. In this video, we'll be unboxing the Samsung Galaxy Mini. So for
So you see the video there, it was quite smooth, no major issues in the quality of a YouTube video, which was quite nice. Okay, so now we'll just stop that and leave the browser just now. So web browsing is okay on it. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the other apps on this phone. So here we have the phone dialer, which is fairly basic, but it has been modified a bit. So as you see up here, you've got your keypad, your logs, favourites and contacts, with the nice large buttons which makes it really easy to dial numbers. You can also hit a button here to send a text to someone directly through that interface. And because you have your swipe keyboard, it makes things really nice to use. Hit the home button, and you've got your market and all that stuff. And this is obviously fully customizable with widgets, you can move them around, add new ones, etc., which is quite nice. Which is quite nice. You can just remove them like that. Also, this phone does run live wallpapers. So we can go open that, we can do that. And when the live wallpaper loads up, you'll see in a minute that it actually runs okay and the phone doesn't seem to struggle while running a live wallpaper, which is quite nice. However, I'll change it back to a normal one just to improve the performance of the device. We're doing the rest of the stuff. So now if we open the app drawer and go there, we can see we have a few apps we're going to run. The first one is Quadrant Standard, which does a benchmark of the phone and compares it to other phones. So we're going to go in there and hit Run Full Benchmark and leave that to run. So this will run and it's going to check the, the CPU, pro memory, input, output and 2D and 3D graphics of this phone and get an overall score that we can compare to other phones. So I'm going to skip all these ones, let you, I'm going to skip the video on a bit until we start seeing graphics ones which are a bit more interesting to watch. Okay, so now we're doing a graphics test with the frame rate down the bottom. Seem to run that one quite smooth. So also running this one. This one's appearing a bit more juddery and not perfect frame rate. However, it would if it was a game, it would probably still be playable, just not that enjoyable because of its frame rate. However, this is it's sort of illustrated by the low speed processor in this phone. This one's actually running okay. And I've actually seen that this is quite a high score for this benchmark. I've seen this one run really low low on some other devices. This phone does seem to run fairly smoothly, and I think this is also down because it's got the lower resolution screen. So that's done, I'm going to send these in to compare them to other phones, and there we go. So the performance of this phone was quite surprising. It obviously performs lower than some much higher end devices, such as Galaxy S etc. However, it still performs about the same as the Nexus One, if not slightly higher. This is because even though the phone has a low speed processor, it's only pushing a few pixels on the screen, so it's okay. So that was quite good on the performance front. Next up, if we're to open Angry Birds, see how that's going to run. I have noticed it takes a little while to launch some some apps, however it's not terrible and runs okay. Okay, so I can see Angry Birds are now loaded. Turn the sound down a bit on it. it. Took a little while to load, it's not the fast thing, but we can play the game anyway. And as you can see, while running the game, it runs fairly smoothly. However, the graph, however, the screen makes it all the items in the game appear quite blocky, which is a bit unfortunate. Okay, one thing I found that demonstrates the viewing angle in the screen's issues is this image on 3's home page. As you can see, it shows some faces fading out. However, as the screen's tilted, they actually disappear. It's almost like you're looking at a hologram. As you can see. So that's sort of one flaw with the screen on this device. Okay, so overall, it's a fantastic value Android smartphone. The screen, however, is a bit of a disappointment, as well as video quality. The screen should be okay for most people. However, I urge you, if you're considering buying this, to go into your local mobile phone retailer and ask to see a working model, if they don't have one on display already. They should be happy to show you one. And then just check it and just make sure the screen doesn't hurt your eyes, because for me, it seems to cause quite, high, quite a lot of eye strain for me. However, this is no way a bad phone, and I would recommend it. So thanks for watching, don't forget to comment, rate and subscribe, and you can also visit our website at review-this.org.